time of the day and the replay is made and you see it but glad to have ashton back brandy held the fort down as much as she could for him while he's out dealing with the president of zimbabwe and major movers and shakers and heads of states and um did a phenomenal job with the World uh, Economic Congress. In case those of you did not get to see that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week, please go back on my Facebook page and please go back to YouTube and you'll be able to see. Uh, it was absolutely um, just the information is not only informative, but it was it was it, it challenged you it just provoked you to get up and do something and then also to give you a world view of what's going on around the world sometimes we feel like we're so cut off and sometimes americans feel like everything is happening here well we know we sing that song we are the world but we are not the world the world is the world so you need to know what's going on around the world so that it can um you can shape your views about what's happening from a whole global perspective so don't miss that make sure you go check it out on our youtube periscope and facebook now remember with um Periscope, we only got till, um, what, March, the end of March, they saying before they're going to rip that, but they already took 20,000 people away from me because we were exposing pedophilia and all of that. So, But thank you guys for staying with us. As you're hopping on, you know what you need to do. Make sure you share, share, share. It don't cost any money to share. So share, comment, like, share, comment, like. And through the day, take this as an opportunity to minister to people. So I was going to title this, um, This Means War, women who change the times but men i don't want the men to think that we're leaving them out so this is for it's time to change the times. so you look at that and i'm going to give you examples of women in the bible um that change the times as we are leading up to so sisters empowering the world march the 4th through the 7th and uh so excited about that coming to you from the teen pregnancy center we are transforming this place into a place of opulence when our girls get here i mean is first class living they're going it's going to be a bible incubator they can come here because most of the organizations that uh that are federally funded they once it's federally funded they can't say jesus you can't preach to them you can't talk to them about i mean you just jesus is out the bible is out so we're not really we're not willing to do we're not willing to exit him out i can't do life without him okay so for here when the girls come it'll be an incubation center for them to get full of the word of God, get a Bible foundation in them. And our strategy that makes us unique is to get, to build a sense of community, to get a, a team of aunties to adopt each girl, uh, sorority groups, church groups, women that come together, girlfriends that have been friends since high school or whatever, come together and be in that young girl's life, not just till the baby is born, but to help her in developing her life skills. And having said that, it's going to be a training place where we do just that, teach them on life skills. We have women already that have been volunteering their services who have their degreed professionals with dealing with parenting. Um, we want to teach them on things like uh, how to handle their finances, nutrition. And the biggest thing is getting that biblical foundation. We, we said we just envision like, you know, a big mama, you know, sitting in the rocking chair with the girls sitting at her feet. A lot of young girls don't have that big mama image uh, that some of us grew up with because a lot of them were babies having babies. So changing the culture, changing the culture. And uh, so is coming up. We're gathering and rallying, galvanizing women from around the world. Uh, we're going to start announcing some of the speakers Um people that have just on the top of their game in their arena you'll see the flyer out today global leaders from around the world that's a place at the table for you we i am called to people who want to make a difference people that are not just interested in platforming with someone and being on this platform and having a meeting and going to another conference and what's in it for me but understand in your mature level by now especially in the age that we're living in that um the bible says um, redeeming the time for the days are evil. We are living, living in some very perverted, evil days. Um, I don't ever like to, um, give the devil any advertisement, but someone just sent to me yesterday, just say, I put these things out here so you can be aware. And they tell me that it's really been out since 2012 of uh, the queen James Bible. And of course their account is that King James was bisexual. And, um, so they are honoring him by having the queen James Bible. Don't hate anybody. Don't send me a hate me. We hate no one. No one puts more time into any more than I do to anybody who has any type of 
challenges in life and going through things in life. I'm an ear. I love everybody. I'm, I'm, I relate to everybody, love everybody, uh, but just want to put it out there so you can know what's out there. So those that are parents, you have the right to determine as a, pa a parent what you want your child exposed to. I'm a child advocate. So that's why we put that out there. And, uh, and to also keep you all abreast of the times. Well, this is why we say this means war, that um, the enemy has so many different tactics uh, of today. Uh, there's so many hate groups and things out there, and we're trying to be the opposite, spread some love. There's so much darkness. We're trying to be the opposite, just spread some light and um, to make a difference. And having said that, let's get ready to get in the word. Don't miss all of you women. This is going to be the greatest investment you ever made in your life. Um, when Daisy Osborne invested in my life and prepared me with a biblical worldview, with a worldview, it changed my whole entire life. Um, I realized how narrow my thinking was. And for the days that we're living in, many of you women that have been doing ministry for years, you're going to be called to a much higher table and a broader table and a global table. Uh, when you look at the World Economic Congress that was just this week, you can see people that are game changers, world changers. I mean, literally not just talking, legislating things, uh, rallying and leading initiatives that have completely shifted the game. And so there's a place at the table for you. I want you to take this as an opportunity to network with other women. Every last one of the women that did our last Sisters in Power in the World, it was like, they it's jaw dropping. They're like, we never knew this stuff. If you think we brought information that you never knew, and if you thought you sat at the feet of people like, my God, what nation are they from? Where are they from? And where have they been? How'd you find them? You don't want to miss this um, whole atmosphere that we're creating a birthing center. It is a conclave. It's a Congress. It's a round table. It is for thinkers. It's for doers. It's not for talkers. You know, it's for people that want to go beyond just talking. And that's the age. That's what this age mandates. Don't miss it. Now, what are we doing as an, to incentivize you not dragging your feet? We are attaching and giving as a bonus our Global Leadership Training Center course, which is a $3,000 course uh, that is completely equipping you for a biblical worldview on things from environmental science, public health. I mean, it's amazing when you find out I didn't know that 80% of women in developing countries have no access to health care. Wow, we've been caught up in our own little world. We didn't know. What, what is infant mortality rate? You know, we didn't know anything about profiling a nation. Um, so many different things. Clinical testing. They've been doing clinical testing in Africa for years and just so many different things. Chemtrails. It goes on and on. It opens you up to a whole world. So you can sit at the table and you don't know where God is equipping and preparing you to take you to. Preparation is never lost time. So for God to, uh, as you show him your preparation, as he did with Esther, God was grooming her to be in a diplomatic order. And I believe God's doing the same for you. And there's a place at the table for you. So women, make sure you go to sistersempowerintheworld.com quickly and save your space there. It's going to be worth every investment. Just think for $199, you're going to be able to get a $3,000 uh, curriculum outside of the three days that you get with the training in and of itself and tons of material and an opportunity to network as well. We'll probably have some uh, Global Leadership Training Center videos. Ashton, I probably need to look and see if you can give me a thumbs up if we have a video ready. If not, uh, GLTC video, just text me and let me know. We're back to producing with one another again. I'm going to move on if not. Um, let's see, what is he giving me here? Looks like he's getting that video pulled up, huh? So that you'll know what all GLTC offers. Everybody say, thank God, Ashton's back. Thank God, Ashton's back. Thank God, really. Yeah, and you know Ashton had to fight for his life. The enemy thought he was going to take him completely out. I uh, want to take this time and share with some of your friends right quick. It's going to be a powerful word uh, while he's pulling up the GLTC video. I want to remind everybody about, oh, they moved my books. I'm glad God made me a girl. I'm glad God made me a boy. Don't forget to get those. They're on our website, affirming your child's identity and their gender identity, as well as um, the new book, 
patriots of color. I'm so excited about that. And let me do this to Ashton too before we get there. I'll, I'll make sure I do it at the end of the broadcast so he'll have time to pull it up. But let me do this so that you can start seeing a little bit of the inside of the book. The images are phenomenal. The illustrator is my nephew. And I'm not saying it's phenomenal just because it's my nephew, but incredible. Uh, they just will draw the children in. And let me send this over to you. Hold on. Just to show you a little bit about what you can expect in the book. Order the book now and we'll ship the book quickly to your home. And we put a message inside of the book if you want a message there from your, uh, to put us a little, let us put a little message in there for your niece, nephew, son, daughter, grandchild. Um, we'll make sure it's there. Okay, what is Ashton telling me? Okay, let's go here. Okay, he says we're ready. Not sure what's happening. Let's try it one more time. If not, we're going to move on and give them a chance to look at it and play with it a little bit more and maybe have it at the end of the broadcast. For those that are working at home, you probably got your headsets on and working. And again, our videos are played throughout the day. And we are an hour later than we normally come on. We had a powerful time in prayer this morning, real powerful time in prayer this morning. I'm going to try this one more time and then we'll roll on because I'm so excited about this word this morning. Got international guests coming in You're dissatisfied with the type of leadership that you're seeing. There we go. We see. Well, guess what? That's a sign that God is calling you to be the transitional leadership that he's looking for. Think about it. When Israel was in a position of needing transitional leadership, he knocked on the doors of Esther. When God needed Traditional leadership in the days of Egypt with the children of Israel, he raised up a Joseph to sit at the place of being the financier, the minister of finance over the nation. We don't always see ourselves in those kind of positions. And so Global Leadership Training Center has been uniquely designed to raise up next level leadership, emerging leadership, to be world class leaders, to be diplomats, and to not be afraid in any way of sitting at the seat of those who have been making major decisions for the nations of the earth. You've been called to that table. Do you have a desire to reach the lost? Do you want to evangelize overseas? Are you ready to make a difference? If we don't get back to the original assignment, we'll be here 20, 30, 40 years from now, and three-fourths of the world still has not been reached. Dr. Patricia Bailey presents the Global Leadership Training Center, an on-site six-month leadership training and internship program established to prepare students to serve in the largest unevangelized region of the world, known as the 1040 window. You will learn practical and effective hands-on and how-to methods for reaching the lost and put them immediately to use on the missions field. You know all God is looking for is somebody that would dare to believe Him? But how can you have a world vision? How can you believe that we're going to really take the world if we don't have a strategy, if we don't have a plan, and we're not using faith? When your internship is over, you'll be equipped to impact the world through medical assistance, literacy centers, feeding programs, international community development, humanitarian and crisis relief, economic empowerment. Thousands die every day without ever hearing the gospel. Call now. Become a student or impact the world by sponsoring a student. See how affordable this life-changing education can be. Receive an education beyond mere knowledge. Change the world. Hi, this is Dr. Pad, and I'd like to take this time to encourage you and challenge you to live the life you were meant to live. GLTC Online is finally coming forth. In order to live the life you desire, there are classes you need to take now.
training you need to do now. The classes needed to live the life you desire. Simply, it's just that simple. GLTC Online is going to allow you the luxury and the comfort of training in the comfort of your own home, give you that flexibility, but at the same time, you're gonna get the same intense training as those on site. Also, what GLTC Online is going to offer you is the ability for the entirety of your life to come and sit in the classroom setting for one week a year to keep refreshing and sharpening yourself to go to the next level. GLTC Online will equip you to be a 21st century leader and bringing a development of global consciousness and making you ready for a global society. God is enlarging your tents. He's stretching you. He wants to take you to the next level. And the assignment upon your life, if you're hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth and it's resonating in your spirit at all, is because you know in the very heart of your hearts that you've been called to the nations. In the life of Jeremiah, he says, before you were in your mother's womb, I called you, I sanctified you. Jeremiah 1.5, I set you apart to be a prophet to the nations. If that assignment is on your life to the nations, then you'll never be satisfied with business as usual. Some people have an assignment and their primary calling is to the local assembly. But there are some people that are called and they have been assigned a broader calling, meaning they're called to the body of Christ at large to serve abroad, to serve the nations. And then also, GLTC is for those who desire to do business abroad. We have a training track, tent making, to teach you how to go do international business and to use your career and your profession and your skill set as a way of getting the gospel in developing countries. GLTC Online is very, very unique because you sit at the very feet and ha under the tutelage with combined tutorship, tutelage with instructors is harnessed in a one course, one intense training over a century of academia and learning. GLTC Online has been designed for those who are not able to perhaps leave your nine to five job or your family responsibilities to come to the on-site school, but at the same time, you'll have the opportunity to go abroad with myself, to go do missions trips with me, discounted trips, and all of the other things that are afforded to those at the on-site location, you'll receive the exact same privileges. GLTC Online has been designed just for you. You don't have any more excuses anymore because we're bringing the training that you've been waiting for right within your reach. Call the number on the screen and there's a place for GLTC Online just for you. I can't wait to mentor you and to prepare you for the nation. GLTC stands for Global Leadership Training. And so let's get started with the Word of God. It's going to be very powerful this morning. We're sharing about women that change the times, men that change the times. Uh, I said, this means war. We're not going to just sit back idly by and watch all the schemes and tactics and plots of the enemy and do absolutely nothing about it. So we see, which uh, sometimes we don't think about this, you know, we really don't think about this when we read historical accounts. We don't think about this sometimes when we read biblical accounts in the Bible that these were people facing their times, just like we're facing our times. They had an opportunity to opt to do nothing like we can choose to opt to do nothing. They could have been the people that sit around the market and talking about it in the market and sitting around talking around the dinner table and just shake their head or... They could have said, I'm going to make a difference. And so I have a mandate on my life to provoke, to challenge, to wake up those who were born to make a difference. What if Martin Luther King never did anything? What if Rosa Parks never did anything? And as this is African-American History Month, I want to especially uh, make a focus on those who who were contributors that changed the entire world. They were game changers. And so coming out of the gate, let's talk about two people. We want, we always do think two things. We do a biblical account and then we parallel the biblical account with a um, historical account, African-American historical account. So let's see which one we do first. Let's do the Bible first. Let's put the Bible first, okay? And Judges, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse, we gave the story yesterday about Deborah, who was this female judge. I mean, way, talk about game changers. A woman judge, a woman leader in a male-dominated society, and a woman who the men had to come to her 
for counsel. Now, I want the men to understand this is not a male bashing broadcast. We're highlighting women right now simply because Sisters Empowering the World is coming up. But I need you to understand that I'm talking to everyone, okay? And here this woman, and I just I love the boldness of her life in that we shared about her yesterday with Deborah and how she rose up and went to battle against this fierce army and at the same time. And the interesting is she's facing the same thing and the same battle and the same opposition that um, Israel is even facing today concerning that region, fighting for the region of the world that God promised to them, which is Palestine. And so here we see as the story goes and she rallies her troop together, her troops together, as she rallies the troops, Cesaro, who's the enemy, uh, he ran into the tent of Jael. And this particular woman stood outside the tent and said, come here, come here, come here, I'm going to hide you. I want you to look at uh, the tactics, the, the warfare tactics, and how two things I want you to look at, the warfare tactics, but then also how she opted to put her life on the line. Now, here this is, the man is out. He's the top commander. He's the enemy. He's the one that's taking people out. I mean, she, she could have easily been a woman that would go somewhere and hide for her life. And a lot of people right now stand silent. You know, they just been like, everybody's just tired after the elections. It's crazy enough 2020. Let me just take a chill pill. Well, we're not talking about anything political. We're talking about culture. We're talking about society. We're talking about fighting for our children and culture and the direction, not just our nation is going, but the world. We know that there is a globalist agenda. We know there's an antichrist agenda. And so every day, I just want to challenge you every day to be the light, to be the salt that God's called us to be in the earth. So this woman, she pay attention to, she considered not her own life. She put herself in harm's way. She was a risk taker. She took a chance. She, she, you know, she said to him, come, 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 let me hide you. And so she said, Jalel said, who was the wife of Heber? She was a wife. Just think about it. She could have been easy. Like, let me hide behind my husband. You know, my husband even giving me permission to do this. She was the wife of Heber, the Kenite. And because Heber's family was friend on friendly terms with Jabin or Hazer, Jalel went out to the meet the Sesera and said, come hide into the tent. Come, don't be afraid. So he went in, into her tent. And she covered him with a blanket. I mean, she's really doing this whole thing, acting this out. Come on, let me cover you with a blanket. Let me take care of you. Let me cover you. And then please give me, he asked, please give me some water, he said. And he said that I'm thirsty. So she gave him some milk in a leather bag and she covered him. Look, she's giving him milk. She's covering him. You know, he's not thinking anything at all. She's very non-assuming. And he stands at the door. Stand at the door. He tells her, you stand at the door. He says, and if anybody comes and asks you, if there's anyone in here, if I'm in here, tell them no. So she's just going right on along with it, guys. But when Cesare fell asleep, I love this. The enemy is never on top of his game all the time. Here, he fell asleep. And when he fell asleep, she understood, let me take this opportunity and make my move and make my move now. So when he fell asleep, from exhaustion because he was tired of fighting. And you know what? She remember she gave him milk. And what does that milk do? That milk is kind of like sedates you, you know. And she probably warmed the milk, I'm sure. So that warm milk like a baby just sedated him, you know. And then as he was asleep from exhaustion, she quietly crept up. And girlfriend took a hammer. I wish I brought my hammer from in here because we got hammers all around here with this construction site here. Took that hammer and took the tent, the peg to the tent. I'm sorry, the peg to the tent. And she drove the tent peg through his temple. And she pent him to the ground till he died. So let's look at this, what's symbolic of this. She dealt with the head. She dealt with the leadership. She drove it through his temple, the thinking, the leadership, the mindset, the head. And she drove it into the ground until he was finished wow won't that preach what is it that we're allowing to continue to just go without being addressed what is it that we're allowing the head of the enemy to release his agenda it's time to take the peg of the word of god and drive that thing right into the culture and to drive truth everywhere where there's been everywhere where there's 
been falsehood and lies. We're going to take that peg and drive the truth of the word of God like a hammer. She was not willing to just sit back and say, I opt to do nothing. She took what she had in her tent. She took what she had in her house. The peg, it was in her house. The hammer, it was in her house because they had to pick up, you know, they had to have pegs and move in their tents all the time. So she used what she had to take the enemy out. What do you have that's in your house? What do you have that's in your means that you can literally stop allowing the enemy to take ground in your life, with your family, with your children, with your finances, with your health, with your future? You can take him out. And the peg we're talking about is the word of God. Let's look. Here I go over to Harriet Tubman. Here this woman, Harriet Tubman, uh, another type of a jail. Harriet, which was a woman that changed the times, and these women were risk takers as well. Women that were not just listeners, but they were doers. They were actual women. They were women on a mission. We see here with... Um, Harriet Tubman, I love this one, write about it in the book, I'll show a little bit later. But Tubman proved herself, had proven herself to be invaluable at gathering clandestine information. Tubman assumed leadership as a secret military mission in South Carolina, one of the most racist areas of that time. South Carolina's low country. So she knew all about them swamp areas in that low, air, low country. She knew how to navigate down through those uh, terrains. She knew the topography. Cause she'd been leading that she'd been, she did all that during the underground railroad. She knew the swamps, the lakes, the high places, the low places. She knew how to, and you know, if you've been down in deep South Carolina, I mean, it can be some deep swampy low places. And she need to understand, we need to understand at first that her foremost priority would be to defeat and to destroy the system of slavery. And in doing so to definitely to defeat the Confederacy, the first woman to lead a military expedition. Isn't that something? Not the first black woman, not in our history books that much, huh? Not just a black woman, but the first woman in the whole of the United States was a black woman that led, the first woman to lead a military expedition was a black woman. Isn't that amazing? So God is no respecter of person. So here she is, well, puts herself on the line, like she's done so many times before when she was freed, going back in there again to free another and free another and free another. But now she's going in just like a type of a jail and getting clandestine information and bringing it over because her ultimate end, the ultimate goal is to defeat the Confederacy. She's out to end slavery. And um, she does it, first woman to lead this. So in order to do what we've never in order to get what we've never gotten before, we got to be willing to do what we've never done. Do you think JL had ever done that before? I don't think so. Had it ever been recorded in the Bible? I don't see anywhere in the Bible it was recorded. So she was doing something innovative, unconventional, non-traditional. And so why are we sitting back for someone else to make the solutions and come up with things for us? God is challenging us to be innovative, to be on the cutting edge, to think outside of the box. Like even the way we're laying out things here at the vision house here and the way we're laying things out at the vision house in South, South Africa, we're laying out a template to raise future leaders and both accounts. There was an enemy against JL against the people of God at the time. There was an enemy, a war against in the time of Harriet Tubman as well. Both women dealt with warfare tactics. They were both engaged in war and they refused to let the threat and the intimidation of the enemy just make them cowardly. But instead, they rose up to be a game changer. And in short today, I'm saying to you, there's a game changer in you and there's a warrior in you and you were never born. God never intended, my pastor says, for this much preaching to be done without being coupled with demonstration and action. It's time for action. And here's an opportunity for us to link up together, men and women, and actually do things, actually do things that are, that are proved to be, will prove to be just as much of a game changer as Harriet Tubman. 13 different expeditions, bringing people out of slavery, putting their lives on the line, a modern day of her time type of a Moses. That type of woman is inside of you. That type of leader is inside of every man 
And I'm speaking to that inside of you. There are things that God has spoken to you to do. There's no doubt that when she went and got the clandestine information and she was leading this military expedition and she knew that her life was on the line and she knew that there was a price tag over her head and she knew what it was like to go deep down south after being freed. She had already been freed. She was already in a free land. Why on earth would she go back into the heat of fire and put her life on the line? We're living in a time right now, people, if we don't do something, if we don't rally together, if we don't become a voice, and if we don't push back the plans and the schemes of the enemy, and if we don't have an alternative strategy against his wiles, against the wiles of the enemy, the schemes, the perversion, some of the things are so sick and it's just being released and exploited and put out there, the propaganda. So we have to rise up like a modern day Harriet Tubman as we celebrate African American History Month and rise up like a modern day jail, men and women, and say enough is enough. This means war. I'm not going out like this. And so I'm, I'm just so excited about us connecting together. We have the work that we're doing here, the work that we're doing in South Africa, and we're doing this in the nations around the world. We also have Young Adults United for Global Outreach, raising up young people. If you're a young person is questioning their identity, used to be excited about the things of God, but lukewarm, won't spend any time in the word, won't pray, send them to me. Let me get with them. Let them become a part of Young Adults United for Global Outreach. We have Global Leadership Training Center where we're equipping leaders, you, men like you, women like myself, who are being prepared. Just think, this week, I'm on a platform with the president of Zimbabwe. How did that happen? Why was I called to be on that platform? Simply because of the humanitarian work that I've done. Yes, they know that I received the Lifetime Achievement Award by President Barack Obama, but the actual work, the practical ministry, the practical application of work, practical theology, your work will speak for you. But to be able to sit at the table of global leaders, you've got to know what's going on as they're discussing things like climate and discussing so many different things and public health and uh, discussing so many different things. There are people that were globalists there that were represented. And just like God prepared Esther for the times, and Mordecai reminded her, you baby girl have been brought into this palace for such a time as this. And I believe God is speaking that very same word to you. The type of training, the type of teaching, the type of tutelage that you need for your next level assignment goes beyond the narrow calling that you operated in previously. Like it was narrow compared to where he's taking you. There is a broader assignment for this season, a much much, much broader assignment that he's calling you to. And I want to help equip you men and women to be prepared for those open door opportunities. Preparation is never, ever lost time. Trust you've been blessed by the word today. Two powerful women that allowed themselves not to be intimidated, rose to the occasion and said, enough is enough and took the enemy out. So we want to show our book, uh, um, which are things that we are doing to uh, counteract against the things that are out there. The book opens up with the little boy up on Mount Rushmore saying, you know, he's proud to be an American. He stand on Mount Rushmore. Uh, this is the nation from which he was born. He's sounding aloud his horn. And then we go to Bernard, Bernardo de Galvez showing the Latinos that helped fight and win this front uh, who brought together a army of diversity of different ethnic groups of people back in those days and won the battle at Pensacola. And um, that was a major battle that had a lot to do with us getting our freedom. And uh, they were made up of freed slaves. They were made of first nation. Some people say, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, first nation. Some people say Indian. Some people say Native American, but it was made up and combined of an unconventional group. Again, people doing something that had never been done before. And we want your young children to know about this history that has been unsung. It took forever to get um, uh, Bernardo de Galvez, his even statue and even his picture 
lined up with the Patriots there at the Capitol. This woman went and fought for it. I think she was a, out of his lineage, out of, out of the Galvez family. And if you go to Pensacola right now, you'll see streets named after Galvez. They have a ceremony and things every single year commemorating the con contribution that he played in the Revolutionary War. Well, we tell you about that and we tell you what he did. He, um, when George Washington was depleted of resources, Bernardo de Galvez sent $70,000 and a fleet of horses when uh, uh, George Washington was depleted of resources. I do a little bit of rapping in the book. I had so much fun doing this book and then we talk about the boston massacre which is the image ashton just had of the boston Ash uh, massacre which we always hear the account of chris uh, christmas attics but then there were first nation that were fighting and it was just not just about what was going on at that time then the battle at bunker hill and the battle of rhode island how these bad brothers peter salem and samuel harris which they didn't even think that black men could lead troops and win he had a uh, five units all black five units that they won that battle and then there with harriet tubman getting the clandestine information and hiding and you know hiding the the the, the and, and getting the information over to um to those so that the confederate could be taken out it's just a phenomenal book and then we have a confession at the end you see this picture is depicting uh, uh freed slaves uh caucasian and latino showing the diversity it's all of us uh, made up the freedom of this nation, not just one ethnic group. And then we do also make sure that we include and acknowledge our Anglo sister and brothers that we were all working together. This one here is James Amistad Lafayette uh, that was the butler to uh, General Cornwallis. And he would take the information back to the camp. And it was his idea to go in and disguise himself as a slave. And uh, it wasn't his command in chief. He did that. And then, of course, we lead the kids into an incredible a confession at the end to not let anybody bad mouth their country and talk bad about their country but to be proud of where god has them born and proud to be an american and proud to uh, and we even say that there are mistakes of our past there are things of our past we're not proud of but the same god that has forgiven us of those things has given us the power to thrust forward as we unite together so we want our children to get history from a biblical based perspective the books are on the website you go there you can order them just like I'm glad God made me a girl and I'm glad God made me a boy and we'll begin I'm so happy to sign the books. If you are a school teacher, we have special discounts for schools, Christian schools, uh, uh, youth churches. If you're a youth church worker, you want to get these series of books for the children. There's actually four that I'm glad, gave, glad God made me a girl, glad God made me a boy and the Patriots of Color. And the next one that's coming out that we've already written, waiting for the illustrations to be finished. And that is an oath to children to make a vow to not depart from the word of God because so much is being taught in the classroom. So much is being taught even in culture and things that they see uh, several, several subliminal in images, thousands and thousands of days that are anti Bible anti and the trend will be to try to cause them to believe that the Bible is just a history book. But for them to make an oath at an early age that the Bible is the word of God and the final authority of my life and the supreme compass to my life. And we did that for children as well. So now we got a foundation concerning embracing truth and the word of God, a foundation embracing their identity and who they are, a foundation, a foundation of celebrating and being proud and not being uh, uh, taking on a spirit of anarchy and lawlessness. Because these are some of the things that the Bible told us would happen in the last days men would be lawless and so we um we saying to the enemy we got something for you we're not sitting back and being trapped in silence and sitting on our hands we believe that god's called us in the kingdom for such a time as this i can't wait to join with my sisters and us to all be at the global table together with leaders from around the world march the fourth through seven some women are actually coming to the facility to be here and a part of the teen pregnancy center helping to put that together for those of you that want to be a part of what we're doing you can send a donation to uh the cash app should be on up there on the screen uh you can go to patriciabailey.org and you can donate that way all ta donations are tax deductible and um and then you can have some skin in the game by pushing up your sleeve and coming right on here and being a part of helping us to build this place out 
uh, for something that's going to long outlive us. You don't want to miss it. So I think that's all we got for you today. Thank you so very much. And I can't wait for you to go through these global leadership training courses. You don't want to miss it. Don't forget to go to hervoice.myshopify.com. Ashton, make sure I don't miss it. Uh, what Val has out there. She has incredible things for this month of February in observance of African American History Month. And every single day you see me wearing her voice. And these are out on the on the um website 55 percent off can you believe it and don't let this month get by and you miss out on those sales again what is her voice it is the um part the global trade part of the arm of the ministry it does raise the funds to pay for kids to go to school dig wells health care the teen pregnancy center the vision house uh, those her voice purchases is shopping with the cause and the proceeds go towards what we're doing. You know, we don't have a church. Uh, we're out here in full time ministry and have been for 41 years and got through the, the books to the books that you buy. The books that you buy serve twofold purpose. They bless your children. They bless you. But they also are what we use to fund the work here. And so God is our source and he's been helping us through it all. And if you want to be a part of this life changing venture and initiative that we're birthing we so welcome you please call me at 336-917-2630 and don't forget to go to her voice dot my shopify.com she oh val showed me some of the latest on her new collection ladies val's new collection you've got to see those things she's got out there beautiful i like val i like this one. Oh, i like that and um and these earrings i just rock these earrings almost the thing that i love about the african fabric you see me wear them every day they just pick up whatever you're wearing they just rock a simple outfit and they're pennies, you know, compared to what they would be if you were in some boutique somewhere. And just think women made these. Our African sisters made these. And as a result, we get to, uh, it's job creation. We're giving them a hand up and not a hand out. So we'd love you to be a part of her voice. I can't wait to connect with you guys for Sisters Empowering the World. And until next time, this is Dr. Pat. Trust you've been blessed by JL and by the account of Harriet Tubman. Just think about it, not just freeing slaves, but leading a military expedition. How bold is that? Talk about doing what had never been done before. And I speak into your life right now. There's something on the inside of you that's trapped and waiting to come forth. There's something that God's predestined. There's something that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that God has called you to do. And you know that you're not called to life as usual. And you know you're not called to ministry as usual. You know that you're that type of person that sees what's going on in the world. And you're not only convicted, you're not only moved, you're not only stirred, but there's something that's a call to action for you. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, I unlock that prophetic destiny on the inside of you. And I decree that there's a team of like-minded sisters and brothers for you to connect with who are completely adamant about not leaving this earth without fulfilling the mandate that God has placed upon our life. And I decree that you will not take not one molecule of what you have had as a contribution to your generation. You will not rob us of what God gave you. You will make your deposit. And I decree that you are a game changer and a history maker in Jesus' mighty name. Can't wait to hear from you. Let's connect. I want to thank all my prayer team. Um, you you all know who what you mean to me, the certified prayer warriors and the MTM intercessory team. Hopefully you guys got a chance to watch before you went to work. You are everything to me. All of our partners, all of those that follow us on social media, thank you. And we appreciate you so much and help us birth this vision. We can save babies. We can save lives. We can save orphans. We can make a difference. Our children don't have to be infiltrated with the lies of the enemy. We can spread light, not darkness. We can spread love, not hate. And each one of us, one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000. And always remember this, guys, we are better together. Don't forget to go to the website, patriciabailey.org. Some of you get paid today. Shoot us a donation right quick. You can get by way of Zelle, PayPal, um, Cash App, and then just go to the website. All giving is tax deductible. Come and be a part of this vision. We welcome you because I believe we are better together. See you next time. It's Dr. Pat. Hi ladies, it's that time of the year again and need your help like never before. This sew is going to prove to be even more intense than the one last year. 
we're bringing women together that are affecting and transforming their community and their world. Our focus this year is educators who are literally transforming curriculums and how our children are being taught and teaching us to be, what to be aware of but then also strong women that are very on the cutting edge concerning the foster system and, and a lot of our children that are that are completely displaced i believe that with some of the things that we've just seen recently to be very honest with what just happened on january the 6th uh, a lot of young children and young, young people are really really confused and we haven't really shown them the picture of leadership the picture of accountability the picture of kingdom the picture of compassion that they deserve to see so as we come together as sisters in power in the world boy do we have strategies and hit the ground strategies like literally to work things through and and timelines like never before because it's a time that we can't talk about this anymore it's time to move and it's time to move now we have global leaders coming together from around the world and again it'll be another think tank it'll be another round table and there's a seat at the table for you times have changed we're in a new year now we're facing so many things and if there's ever been a time for sisters to empower their world and to be in a position like a modern day Deborah, a modern day Esther, or even a modern day Rahab to affect change and literally be the change we want to see is now. And we can't wait. You can't afford to miss this moment. Get your place now. We literally have knocked off $100 for those for the early bird registration. You can put $25 down and just hold your place. I'm telling you, I'm bringing you the very best of the best in their field. So let's get ready. God bless you. And I can't wait to see you at the table. Um, when I think about when I was shooting that out on the deck in California, there was a plane flying over and I was like, it was like, it was taken off, you know, like literally taken off and everything. And I was like, that's exactly what God is telling us to do. It's time to fly this thing. It's time to get up and go. Don't you sit on this. Go to sistersempoweringtheworld.com or .org. I think you can go to both sites. Register now. You're going to look back and say, thank God I did move. Because if there's ever a time that God needs a modern day Esther, a modern day Sarah, a modern day Jael, a modern day Deborah, he needs us now. And wow, it's going to be poor, poor devil when we connect with each other. And he knows it. Don't drag your feet. There's a seat at the table for you. See you next time. It's Dr. Pat. And Ashton, thank you for not forgetting the video.